What's up everybody and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. On this episode of The Dig, we're excited to share some of our hot off the press 2024 PFR data on one of everyone's favorite topics. Drum roll please, anhydrous ammonia. I'm Aaron, this is Colin, let's dig in. We've done a lot of research around nitrogen, but over the last two years, we have focused some of our PFR efforts specifically on anhydrous applications. There are many ways to effectively apply nitrogen and logistics, cost, soil type, and many other factors can drive those decisions. Ultimately, the weather during the growing season can favor one system over another. We started our nitrogen placement and timing in hydrous ammonia study to evaluate different nitrogen placements and timings and how they affect nitrogen use efficiency, yield, and ultimately return on investment. In 2024, we executed this study at three of our PFR sites, including Iowa, Southern Illinois, and Central Illinois. That's right, Aaron, and we set it up with a total of five treatments. One thing to keep in mind, though, that every single fall application included insert. Treatment number one, which is our control, was 190 units of fall anhydrous ammonia. Treatment number two included 130 units of fall anhydrous ammonia, followed by 60 units UAN two by two by two. Treatment number three was 130 units of fall anhydrous, followed by 60 units UAN side dressed at B3. Treatment number four was 130 units of fall anhydrous with 60 units UAN wide dropped at V8. And our final treatment is our PFR proven practice of 60 units 2x2x2 two by two by two, followed by the 130 units at that V3 side dress. When we compiled the data from all three sites, it was very clear that the most reliable and consistent system in our testing has a split application that includes 60 pounds of UAN up front followed by a side dress application of 130 units of nitrogen. This treatment provided over a $1,000 multi-location net return and an average yield of 253 bushels to the acre in 2024. When looking at the ROI compared to the control of 190 units fall applied, we saw a $14 an acre advantage. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Wow. Gosh, Aaron, you're right. Can I get that on video? It is on video. Oh yeah, make sure I get a copy of that. Anyway, what I think is most interesting is the data continues to back our PFR proven data. After all, we are comparing four treatment options to the last winning nitrogen program of banding 60 units with the planter, followed by the remainder at V3 side dress. We've also conducted anhydrous studies with our larger scale on-farm PFR research. One study that we conducted in 2023 and 2024 was a nitrogen rate study using fall applied anhydrous to see if we could find an economic optimum nitrogen rate in a fall applied anhydrous system, where the anhydrous was again stabilized with insert. This year, our highest ROI treatment was that 200 total units of nitrogen per acre. The theory is that when we apply nitrogen in the fall, more nitrates are available for loss, especially in a year with heavy rainfall. This may explain the response that we saw in 2024 to higher fall applied rates. When looking at our two year data, the 180 units of nitrogen treatment just barely scraped by as the winner in terms of average yield and net returns. Everything we've been talking about this far has been related to fall anhydrous, but we've also got some research when it comes to spring applied anhydrous. The biggest thing we've learned with spring applied anhydrous after three years of testing is that you need to try and maintain a depth of eight inches compared to say four inches to see a yield increase. This is especially true if you're planting corn within a week of that anhydrous application. Moral of the story, the further you can get that seed away from your applied anhydrous depth, typically the higher yield response you're gonna see. If we get that seed too close to anhydrous, then it'll actually ding our yield a little bit. Another new thing we hope to test this year related to anhydrous applications is the use of row cleaners. In one of our on-farm trials, we are putting the Yetter 2967 row cleaners to the test by mounting them on a Case IH 5310 bar. 
Our goal is to determine if an addition of a row cleaner would do a better job of moving residue when applied in the fall and make for a better strip to plant into in the spring. Man, there's just always so much more for us to be learning when it comes to nitrogen research. And look, we just got wrapped up with harvest, but I'm already excited to see what 2025 brings. Oh, me too, me too. Well, hey, with that, that's gonna wrap up this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. And we'll see you again on another episode of The Dig. Hang on, I'm gonna burp. <laughs> I think I'm good. What'd you breathe towards me for? I may have threw up in my mouth a little bit. That's the worst. Anyway, what I think is most interesting. Anyway. Drinking Aaron. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, that's disgusting. What I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. After all, we are here to compare four treatments. We are here. He gets started, but after all. Yeah. After all, we are here to. Com why? Why are we no. here? <laughs> <laughs> why?